Hello and welcome to the latest Ukraine war update. Many events have taken place in the past four days, and as a result, I have a lot to discuss with you today. Once again, we will be examining recently released footage that floods our social media feeds daily but often lacks any background information, so I will do my best to provide at least some context. The first video I want to mention today is the one filmed by a Russian drone in the Zaporizhia region. It claims to show a single Russian tank halting the advance of an entire Ukrainian mechanized company. In the footage, we can indeed see the tank on the left pushing towards an advancing Ukrainian column, consisting of what I counted as 8 to 9 vehicles, including 2 tanks and at least 6 MRAPs. The tank engages the column, which quickly becomes stalled as the Russian tank appears to conduct shoot and scoot maneuvers, meaning it falls back several times before advancing to strike again in order to avoid Ukrainian fire. The original video was about 10 minutes long, but I have shortened and fastened it. I will upload the full unedited clip with subtitles of the Russian communication during this battle for my channel members. If you are a member please ensure that you have enabled all notifications for this channel, as posts on the community tab often do not get displayed to the majority of my subscribers. While it appears that this Russian tank was operated by a highly capable crew, I have to say that it was not solely the tank that stopped the Ukrainian push. How do I know this? Well, because the Russians were also talking about mines and anti-tank guided missiles being used on the radio communication. Furthermore, it is simply not realistic to assume that a single Russian tank alone could hold a vital part of the Zaporizhia front. Also, the video is from a Ukrainian attack that took place in early June. You may ask yourself, how do I know this now? Well, because I already reported about this attack, and back then the footage was filmed from another drone and angle. Additionally, artillery was most likely used as well here. This is basically the standard Russian procedure to deal with such attacks as we have seen in many videos before. This means that this tank was not operating alone and did not face the entire company on its own. However, this also does not mean that the tank was ineffective here. From the footage, it definitely looks like this company took a serious blow and several vehicles were lost. Also on the southern front, Ukrainian fighters of the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade released footage of a javelin strike on a Russian vehicle that looks like either a BMP-3 or BMD variant. The vehicle gets hit in the rear and engulfs in flames after some time. Ukrainian troops also released footage of laser-guided Hydra 70mm advanced precision weapon system rockets being launched from a Humvee at a Russian position located in a tree line. The video also shows the impacts filmed from a relatively close distance. Speaking of precision strikes, Ukraine continues to make use of one of their most effective assets, namely the high-mobility artillery rocket system. Several videos showing rocket launches have been released, indicating that Ukraine is still actively targeting Russian high-value assets such as electronic warfare systems, air defense, and artillery. To stick with air defense, Ukrainian troops released a drone video of a Russian Buk M3 air defense system and its radar being destroyed in Novoprikivka, located in the Russian front's rear. The video was released by the Ukrainian 15th Recon Artillery Brigade. The video shows what I already mentioned in my last video, namely that Ukraine tries to effectively limit those Russian capabilities across the front, piece by piece, asset by asset through extensive reconnaissance and following precision strikes. Finding this equipment located behind the enemy lines can take some time, what is also a reason for Ukraine's slow but steady progress. On its side, Russia has released a drone video showing a pair of Ukrainian CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles spotted advancing towards a tree line with some distance between them. The drone tracks the lead vehicle as it gets struck by what looks like an anti-tank weapon. The hit appears to have stopped the vehicle that was most likely abandoned due to this. From the footage it looks like the CV-90 crew was aware of Russian troops since it was engaging with its cannon just before it got hit. This is the first confirmed clear video footage of a CV-90 being hit on the front in Ukraine, while another video claiming to show a CV-90 being hit as well was uploaded on this channel before it was not as clear and confirmable like this one so perhaps not the first one hit, but the first clearly visible hit. Russia also released close-up video footage of the alleged CV-90 in question, claiming they have already captured it. They show the damage caused to the vehicle and share some interior shots of it. However, the blurred parts to hide the vehicle's location indicate that they have not entirely captured it, and no recovery has been made so far. However, this does not mean that they will not capture it in the end. They will definitely try to do so, as they have a huge interest in this particular vehicle, which was advertised as one of the world's best infantry fighting vehicles. Safely recovering it, though, is not as easy as you might think. 
this recently released video of a captured French donated AMX-10 tank destroyer, for example, shows that there can be quite some time between striking and capturing one vehicle, especially in a highly contested area. This vehicle was essentially reported as abandoned during the beginning of Ukraine's counteroffensive, and the footage confirming its capture by Russia was just released. In my opinion, it makes no sense to withhold it for so long, which leads me to believe that it was indeed just recently safely captured by Russia. It is extremely dangerous to try to bring a disabled vehicle back from the front line, as this video from Zaporizhia shows. Here, we can see a Ukrainian tank attempting to tow another tank away, while the whole process is being observed by a Russian drone that films the tank being targeted by a Lancet drone. A vehicle recovery makes you extremely vulnerable to such attacks, and the enemy knows this in general. I always speak about the omnipresence of drones, and here we have it again. A video from the same region shows a similar incident where a Ukrainian BMP gets hit by a Lancet drone in a gap within a tree line, causing it to block the path for other vehicles. Following this, a second Ukrainian BMP has to push it in order to clear the path. What is very interesting about this video is that there was also a helmet cam footage leak, filmed from one soldier on top of the second BMP as it was pushing the destroyed BMP out of the tree line. Here we can see the whole thing filmed by the drone as the second BMP clears the path. And here we can see the same thing from the perspective of a soldier on top of the BMP. These videos show the problems that can easily occur when trying to recover vehicles. The same goes for Russia, as Ukraine has a huge stock of FPV drones and uses precision munitions, as seen in a few clips before. If you've watched till now, I wanted to take the time to say thank you. Your support really motivates me to keep doing this format. If you haven't already, please make sure to leave a comment and a simple like, as it helps this channel a lot. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell and enable notifications so you won't miss any new uploads. Despite visible vehicle losses, Ukraine managed to reach Russia's main defensive line in the south as this video of a Ukrainian vehicle driving into an anti-tank ditch close to Verbov indicates. All in all, it seems that during the last couple of days, Ukraine continued to make slow progress in the south even if Russia says it is holding the lines. A video filmed further west on approximately the same height shows a Ukrainian Bradley being hit and was geolocated to be in the east of Robotheim, what means that this area currently also is still heavily contested and Ukraine advanced further into Russian lines. The most recent development reported by the Ukrainian side on the southern front was the capture of Staromaios by the Ukrainian Volunteer Army and the 35th Marine Brigade. According to Maxim Tucker on Twitter, who said he was present during the assault, the battle was mostly fought by infantry after artillery targeted the town before. The video footage released also shows tanks and other vehicles in use. According to recent reports, the town was captured using the so-called starve, stretch and strike approach, as I have reported before and as seen in this video. This approach includes taking time to target Russian rear echelon forces with missiles and artillery before attempting larger scale assaults, like the one shown here. Staromayorsk and the neighboring settlements are the southernmost points of the summer offensive, bringing Ukraine one step closer on the road to Mariupol. The key aim of the southern offensive was always to cut the occupied land bridge in southern Ukraine that links western Russia to Crimea. This helmet cam video filmed by Ukrainian soldiers shows them clearing the buildings of the town and what the Ukrainian Navy calls stabilization activities on the liberated territory. According to the Kiev Post, minefields and other fortifications in the area seem to be less concentrated than elsewhere along the 1,000-kilometer front, and the topography of the area offered particular military advantages. While the town opens up a pathway to the Russian-occupied city of Mariupol, it is more likely that Ukraine will first aim towards Berdyansk on the Azov Sea since the town is smaller and therefore easier to recapture than Mariupol. The other main effort will be the city of Melitopol as it looks like from the main direction of Ukraine's efforts. Here we can see the soldier wearing the camera flagging his body in front of him. I know that some people will now cringe in the comments. A similar helmet cam video from what I believe was a recon mission shows Ukrainian soldiers investigating destroyed buildings in the town of Klyshchivka. While I told several times before that Ukraine was on its way towards the doorsteps of the town, the footage together with following clips now confirms that they entered it. This relatively quiet scenes come after three months of heavy fighting in that sector. Ukraine has made steady gains and kept pushing Russian forces further back till they finally managed to enter the town. It has to be said that the men later left the town in a Humvee as they got targeted by sporadic Russian artillery fire. Also footage released earlier shows that intense fighting took place in the southern part of the town a few days before and at least a whole Russian platoon was spotted moving further back into the city. 
On the same front, the third separate assault brigade released a number of helmet cam videos again. As always, the videos show some of their countless mechanized assaults during mop-up operations south of Bagmap. I said it before, but I can only say it again that this brigade is actually the most active one when it comes to releasing videos, and they are fairly transparent when it comes to showing own losses as well. A mechanized assault involves using a combination of infantry, armored vehicles and other mechanized assets to conduct a coordinated and powerful offensive operation. It is a form of combined arms warfare where different military elements work together to achieve a common objective. Mechanized assaults heavily rely on armored vehicles such as tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. These vehicles provide protection to infantry troops support firepower and are instrumental in breaching enemy defenses. The Dutch YPR-765 is mostly used by this brigade during this operation so far. At least from the footage we get to see, the mechanized infantry units, equipped with rifles and supported by the armored vehicles, work closely with the armor to secure and hold the areas cleared during the advance. They provide additional firepower, conduct reconnaissance and secure flanks. The success of a mechanized assault lies in its ability to execute combined maneuver tactics. This involves coordinating the movement and actions of various units to create multiple threats and disorient the enemy's defense. Mechanized assaults aim to achieve speed and surprise, catching the enemy off guard and rapidly advancing before they can effectively respond. It seems that the Ukrainians frequently capture surrendering Russian soldiers since every video released shows this. In general I do not show prisoners of war since I am against their clear showcasing, but since the faces are not visible here in detail and these scenes only show the process of surrendering I left it in this report for visual confirmation. Here we can see combined working of infantry and the armor even better as Ukrainian fighters advance behind the cover of a Dutch M113 relative in order to storm a Russian trench. By working together effectively, infantry and armor can complement each other's strengths and overcome their weaknesses, maximizing their combat effectiveness and contributing significantly to mission success on the battlefield. The armor provides protection, firepower and mobility to the infantry, while the infantry provides situational awareness, target identification, and additional firepower through anti-tank weapons to protect the armor from enemy threats. While advancing behind vehicles offers many benefits, it is essential to recognize that no tactic is without risks. Vehicles can become immobilized or disabled, and the enemy may employ anti-armor weapons specifically targeting infantry following vehicles. Therefore, soldiers must remain vigilant, continuously assess the situation, and be prepared to adapt their tactics as required during the advance. The Russians tried to halt the Ukrainian advance here by using artillery as shown later in the clip and one Ukrainian soldier got WIA because of this nonetheless the video did not stop after this and showed that the Ukrainians kept clearing the trenches. That's it for this video guys. To everyone who stuck through the whole video with me, I wanted to say thank you again. This really means a lot to me, not only because you trust me and are interested in what I have to say and show, but also because it is a hell of work to do these updates the way I do. Usually, people want to bring a certain message or information out and then look for footage to back what they say. Here, however, I have to filter a lot of footage in a short amount of time and fill basically every second with commentary dissecting each second of the clips, which can be quite exhausting since some clips are longer than what one can tell. Also, I try not to be too repetitive and always bring some new things up I have not mentioned already with similar footage. Of course, this is not always possible, but I hope you appreciate that I did my best. If you like what I did here, let me know through a like and a comment. As said, this is not only for me but also for the YouTube algorithm that then shows the videos to more people. Also, if you are interested in the same things as me, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. That way, you won't miss any further Ukraine war updates. I really spend time on these videos. I started creating this upload at 4pm and since then, I have non-stop been working till 5am in the morning. I really hope that I can hire some guys to help me with this in the future so I can bring you even more and better videos, but till then, a lot of coffees are needed.